Yeah, I understand it's going to be a sellout and a red out. And, um, you know, they've got a good team. They've got, uh, obviously, it starts with Gibbs. He's a tremendous player. Tremendous guard, one of the best guards in the league. Um, the big kid, Aldridge, is playing really well for him. He had a big night over at, uh, over at Richmond the other night. And then they've, you know, they've got some other pieces who have been around a while. The kid Sullivan, he's been there since we played him when I was at Chattanooga. So they've had, you know, they have some experienced guys who, who can who can hit shots. So very dangerous team, very very good team, and we'll certainly need to uh, need to be at our best on the road. You're different than Richmond, but is there anything that they did against Gibbs that you might be able to incorporate defensively? Uh, I mean, now the other kid goes off at 34, so you can kind of pick your poison. But is there anything that you can take from what they might have done? Yeah, I mean, we don't, you know, our scheme's a lot different yeah. than Richmond's and what they, you know. Richmond did a lot of switching and, you know, they switched some guys on the Gibbs and had bodies on Gibbs at all times, but then they also had guards guarding Allridge down in the block and Davidson slipped some of their actions and isolated the big kid on their guard. So, um, yeah, there's some concepts we can take for Gibbs, um, but, uh, you know, I mean, you know, the reality is one of those guys can go off and you still have a pretty good chance. We just need to make sure we don't have two guys really really have a great night. Uh, now we can't let Gibbs go for 40 like he's gone for, I think, three times this year. But, but uh, you know, we'll, um, we'll have a plan together for him. But, you, I mean, they've got so many other components who can shoot. They bring a kid off the bench, Rusty Regal, who can really shoot, stretch the floor. They bring some guys. So, you, you know, you can't get so caught up in him that you just let him uh, barrage you from, from deep and, and, and get a bunch of three-point looks. So you watched, you watched other guys defend him. How do you defend him? I can't tell you that, Tim. I mean, we've seen what other people have. We've seen what other other folks have done, and and you know, we'll we'll have uh, something that that fits into what our scheme is, but but also gives us a what we hope to be an opportunity to uh, um, to stop them. But at some point, you just gotta, gotta sit down and guard and keep you know keep him in front and you know stay down on his shot fakes and not foul him. I mean, he's a he's a really good player. He's, he's a really good guard, crafty guard. Um, gets open well, moves well without the ball. So, um, you know, it'll be a challenge. Doug, has there been anything on the defensive side of the ball that makes you like put, put, any, put anything on your toes going into the game? Put anything on what? On your toes. What do you mean? I'm sorry. Like, is there anything that they do defensively that makes you um, on? Oh, well, they work? change their defenses up, you know. He's been kind of strictly a man-to-man -man guy, but he plays some two-three zone. Coach McKillop, he plays a one-three-one zone now. He, 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 they've changed their they changed their defenses, uh, changed their defenses a little bit. Um, so we'll need to, you know, we got to prepare for multiple defenses, prepare to play against multiple defenses. They've been playing some two-three zone on makes and back in man on misses, and so we'll need to be we'll need to be uh, need to be ready for that. Coach Wade, obviously the guys who were on the team last year had a pretty rough experience down there. Um, you know, this is a different team, obviously, and so are they. And I'm not saying that's going to make any difference at all on Friday, but do you tap into that at all for those guys to kind of motivate them a little bit? No, I mean, we'll, you know, it's a different team, different year, different, totally different uh, scenario. So, um, you know, I mean, our, our guys remember it. I mean, it was, it was not one of the finer nights of ECU basketball probably in the last five or ten years. Um, but, uh, I mean, you know, we, it's a different team, you know, different agenda, different, uh, you know, totally different time at this, at this point. So um, they'll remember it, and, you know, we'll, we know we're going into a hostile environment, be sold out. Uh, they'll be wearing their red uniforms and a red out and that sort of thing. So got to be, we got to be, uh, you know, ready to roll and um, play our best, and that's what we can control. And if we play our best, we'll see what happens. Have you ever, and you, I'm guessing you have, but can you remember a team that you've been around that has visibly progressed as much as this year's team has? Because we can see it from when we first started talking to you at the beginning of the season, how much better they are now. And it's not often that you see a team improve that much or maybe get the concept that much over the course of a 10, 12 week period. Have you ever been around a team that's in, steadily progressed this quickly? Yeah, I mean, yeah, both our teams at Chattanooga did the same thing. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to be weird. I mean, but we we won 10 in a row at Chattanooga my first year, and it was right at the same time over Christmas break. And then 
Uh, we won, I think, eight in a row last year at a similar time or towards or eight out of nine or something like that. I mean, so, you know, sometimes it just takes, you know, you being able to see where things are and you just need a little bit of time over break to recalibrate. And, um, you know, obviously we've improved, probably have improved more than even those teams at, at, at Chattanooga did. But both of those teams got better as the year went on and we were much better in conference play um, than we were in non-conference play. And, uh, you know, this team's done the same thing. Um, so I'm glad you've seen the improvement. That's good, Lane. But, uh, we, you know, we, we've got to keep getting better. We're not, we're not anywhere near our, our, our peak at this point. Um, and, you know, we've got, um, you know, we've got uh, 11 conference games left and uh, we've got a lot, of work, uh, a lot of work ahead of us. But, we, you know, we've got to make the same amount of improvement from now till the end of the year that we made from, you know, Christmas break until, until this point. Seen a lot of new parts, a lot of new coaches, kind of the whole thing to start this year off. Have you seen kind of a good bond and a nice camaraderie to all the guys now that we're kind of into the, the dog days of league play? Yeah, we are. I mean, we're, we're having a good time. We're having a good time. I mean, you know, it wasn't real enjoyable at the beginning of the year. I mean, we were they were just kind of feeling each other out. There was a lot of we had a lot of stuff going on, um, and uh, you know now we've got you know everybody's. Man, we're all on the, everybody's on the same team. Everybody's working hard. Everybody's showing up every day to work. We don't have anybody complaining. We don't have any, like it's it's. Um, you know, I went to breakfast this morning with Melvin, and we talked about the team for a while and, and spent some time. And you know, everybody's just, just. Uh, you know, everybody's in a good place right now, and um, you know we've got to continue to to, to do that. I, I think. Um, you know, sometimes when, when you got a rally, you know, you find out a lot about yourself. I, I, I tell our guys all the time, and, uh, and uh, you know, I'm certainly not perfect, but this is one of my really good traits. When the chips are down and things aren't good, that's when I do my best work. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm really freaking good when things don't look good. And uh, I tell our guys, you're going to need that in life. When things don't look good or things are like, you got to figure it out and find a way because nobody's going to save you but yourself. And I think, you know, what we went through early in the preseason, I think our guys realized, like, you know, people aren't coming here to save us. Nobody really cares that, uh, that things aren't going well for VCU. In fact, a lot of people are pretty pleased. And, uh, you know, you, you got to dig in and we got to do our best work at this time. We got we to get to work and do our best work. And uh, we've done that. And when you do that, it's rewarding. They see the results from that. I mean, we've had – you know, I, I know you guys joke, I brought the piggy bank in here and all that, but we've had perfect days of, of work. I mean, we had perfect day of detail yesterday. And I was I had to go to, um, you know, I left for a little bit to, I left in the, I, I did film with them and I started the, 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 the details with them. Then I had to go down to the, to the bayou for the night. And, um, you know, so, so uh, uh, you know, but, they, but everybody got done what they needed to get, what they needed to get done. And, uh, you know, when you do that, there's a confidence that comes with that. They go, oh, hey, coach is, coach is, uh, coach is probably right about some of this stuff. You know, all that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, we've developed and, and uh, you know, we're, we're a fun group to, to be around. Now, if you travel with us, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good group uh, to be around. But it is fleeting and you can't, um, can't ever get too comfortable or, or it, it can change, you know, it can change quickly. But, but I've got to... Got a good sense it's going to end, end pretty well for this group uh, if we just stay along the course that we're on right now. Any talent down the body? Huh? Any talent down the body? Well, it's what I've been there. Because <laughs> <laughs> does a Friday night game throw you guys off your schedule at all? Not really because of the week prep. You know, if we played, you know, we've got a stretch coming up where we play like Thursday, Saturday, Tuesday, Friday coming up in a couple of weeks. I don't know exactly when it is, but it's coming up in a couple of weeks. That'll, that'll throw us off a little bit. But uh, uh, we've we, we got a plan for that. We, we, we've been talking about that as, as a staff and thinking about that. But we'll, um, this is, I mean, you know, we're two days out today, two day prep today, one day prep tomorrow. Uh, get down there and then, then we'll go from there. So yeah, it won't be, um, uh, this doesn't this doesn't affect us as much. Coach, I know that uh, you had you had high expectations for your your guards coming into the season, Jaquan and Melvin. 
Has what they've done even surprised you a little bit with how, how well they're doing on a consistent basis now that we've been January? No, I thought they could both do it. I mean, I um, like I said at this A10 media day, I thought Melvin was a first-team all-league player. I've, I've made no mistake. I think he could be the player of the year in our league. Um, you know, uh, be hard to do that since I guess he none of our guys can get player of the week in the league. But um, it's the way it goes. We'll keep as long as we get the team stuff going, we're fine with that. But. Um, who votes for that anyway? Do y'all vote on that? The no. media? Who does all that? I think I think the league office. Hmm. office. Interesting. Interesting. Drew Dickerson. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Drew. Yeah. Drew <laughs> just pulled, Drew does it all in his office. They must pull it out of a hat. Um, but uh, uh, anyway, um, you know that's fine. We just as long as we keep piling up the wins, we'll be we'll be we'll be fine. We don't we don't need any of the individual stuff. But the. Uh, uh, you know, those two have been playing well. We needed – I mean, the, the fact is we needed them to play well. Um, you know, if Jaquan doesn't play well at Richmond, we don't win. If he doesn't play well against Bonaventure, we don't win. If Mel doesn't play well in some of those games, we got no chance to win. So we needed those guys to – we needed those guys to play well, and, and um, they have, and they're certainly playing at a high level, and we need to keep them there. Jaquan has been uh, huge uh, in these uh, last – this 10-game uh, win streak. How has his demeanor or attitude changed in practice or even all? Yeah, he's just, he's just a lot happier, a lot uh, more optimistic. That's kind of the word we use with him is just be optimistic. You know, uh, bad stuff's not always right around the corner, you know, and, and that's the point when things maybe aren't going well. You know, you got to turn it yourself and good things will happen. Good things are coming. And, um, and uh, I think he believes that now. He sees that. He's seen it happen. And, He's been he's been tremendous, and we need him to continue to be to be great. And a lot of it's because his preparation. He does the right thing every day. He comes in prepared and works hard and watches film and you know spends his time studying the other team, studying what he did. And, and uh, when you do that, good things good things happen. And, and he's seen that. Troy Daniels had himself a nice little game the other night. Do you, do you keep in touch with him at all? Oh yeah, I texted with him. Yeah, he was they're on a ten day road swing, or he was going to come to the game on Friday yeah. at Davidson. Uh, Skeen will be there on Friday, okay. uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I, t I text and, and talk to Troy. Um, but uh, yeah, they're on a 10-day West Coast road swing, so they won't be back till later on in the weekend. Um, so he won't be able to make it on Friday. But yeah, certainly, certainly, certainly stay in touch. Do the guys kind of pay attention to that when they see Troy you know, having? Oh yeah, they they get a kick out of it. Yeah. They yeah, they like the, the you know the little videos that show his montage of threes. I think he had eight the other was it eight the other night something like that. So they, yeah, they 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 pay attention. They they like that. Uh, last week after when we asked Jake Juan what's been clicking for you, and he's like we just we've been winning and you know, sort of momentum built on itself. Uh, he also seemed like one of the guys that you were not calling out, but also not not patting on the back earlier in the season. I wonder if you noticed what's clicked for him. Uh, you said just being optimistic, but. You know, did you prepare for one game and then you won it? And he, and he said, oh, okay, I'll just keep doing this. Well, I kind of forced everybody's hand a little bit with the details. And you had to give me a detail. And part of his detail was his preparation and watching film and that sort of thing. And so then, you know, then I've got it. And then you got to hold them accountable for what they tell you that they want to do. And so we've held him accountable and, and he's done it. And then, as you know, as an adult, all of you guys know if you – have daily discipline with what you do, good things are probably going to happen. If you want to lose weight, you better go to the gym every day and eat right every day. You got to sacrifice something, right? If you want to go on the beach in Miami in the summer, it's what you got to do. And, uh, you know, and so, but you're not going to lose weight by hoping you lose weight and then going to Krispy Kreme while you're getting your tires rotated next door, you know, up the street here. So you're not, you know, that's not going to be a recipe for losing weight. Um, so you've got to do what you, you know, what you say you want. Your actions have to meet what you say you want, and then you got to have somebody who can hold you accountable. It's a lot easier to lose the weight if you've got a partner who you're going through it with, you know, who you hold accountable. Like I'm on that run streak. Well, I talk to the guy I do the run streak with a couple times a week to make sure he's doing his and make sure I'm doing. You know, I don't want to get a text from him, "Hey, are you still good?" And me say, "No." You know, there's some pressure there, and so when that builds, it it it, it certainly certainly helps. But he gets a lot of the credit. I mean, he gets all the credit. He's, he, he's done it. He's turned it himself. It's a great life lesson for him. And, uh, you know, he's playing as well as any, any point guard in our league right now. 
and, and probably as well as most point guards across the country. Coach, um, you always refer to the margin of error that you have with the guys. Yeah, small. Exactly. And how do you make sure that the guys still know that their margin of error is still like this when you're on such a big win streak like this? Well, I talk about it all the time. You guys have heard me talk about it all the time. I mean, you just got to remind them. You know, we talk about it all the time. Mel and I talked about it at breakfast this morning. You know, every little detail matters, especially this last last month, uh, month to month and a half. Like everything's everything's um, everything's going to matter, and so we've got to we got to make sure that we continue to 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 own those details and and continue to to you know, do whatever we can to make sure our margins are increasing a little bit as much as they can. What do you think of Tory Burst and Shiny Gold Shoes? They're nice. No, they're nice. He's, he's a great kid, uh, great person, has a great spirit about him, love him to death. And, uh, yeah, he, he got, some, got some glowing shoes, that's for sure. It seems like he's gotten more PT this season. Because he's a junior, understands a little bit more what you. Well, he just—he's a tough kid. He does what we ask him to do. You know, he's got some physical limitations, but he doesn't let that stop him. You know, he's got a great attitude. He's just like a little pit bull when he's out there. I—I I, I love him. He's a great kid. Um, you know, our our team really respects him and listens to him. And um, you know, yeah, he's played. He's played probably more than he's, you know, ever played. You guys thought I was bluffing when I said we were going to play him early, but I mean. He does what we ask him to do. He competes hard. He brings it every day. He's got a good attitude, positive guy. And uh, when you do that, you know, good things, good things tend to happen. And, and uh, you know, he's been able to contribute and, and, and help us in some games. There have been a couple 20-plus point wins you guys have had where afterwards you've really pointed out that you could have played better. Is pointing out those things after wins like that, immediately after wins like that, is that key in keeping your guys grounded and keeping them focused on the goal? Is that a reason for that? Well, you just, you just, you know, sometimes you worry about, you know, as a coach, I know what our weaknesses are. And you try to, you don't want those to be exposed to the world in the, in the most blatant light all the time. So sometimes when you know that a couple of your weaknesses were exposed, even though you won by 20, you know, you know, maybe we beat this team by 20, but another team who's a little bit, has a little bit better matchup for these weaknesses just saw all this stuff. And now they're just going to rip it apart unless we really can go back and, and, and fix it a little bit. Um, that's where a lot of that um, comes from. And frankly, you know, I, I want our guys to I want everybody we put in there to play well. Everybody we put in there is a reflection on our, our program, a reflection on how we do things. Um, you know, we don't have guys complaining right now over minutes. But, you know, if you had, you know, some of those guys who get in there at the end, like if you want to play more, play the right way. You know, don't give up 15 points in the last three minutes of the game. Like, you guys all want to play more. Do what you're supposed to do. And so, you know, you, you're always looking at, ev at everything um, as, a, as a head coach. But, yeah, you, I mean, you want to – you got to understand the bigger picture. Sometimes it's easy just to pat yourselves on the back. Yeah, we won by 20. Yeah, this – you know. But, but you've got to look at the reality of what's going on and, and see down the road a little bit because sometimes – 20 and 21 year olds aren't as good at seeing down the seeing down the road. Sometimes 33 year olds aren't good at that either. But uh, yeah, you've got to got to do that. As much football film as you use in your practices, you got Denver, or Carolina. I'm not a big NFL guy, but my wife loves the Panthers, so hopefully, uh, hopefully the Panthers will get it done. But we'll we'll uh, we'll see. When is the Super Bowl? A week from Sunday. A week from Sunday. I figured you would have had both teams broken down by now. No, I don't know. I, I'm not a. I'm not a big NFL. Oh, college. I like college football. I'm not a big. Uh, not a big NFL guy. I was at the game last night at uh, in in uh, in Louisiana. There's a guy in a Clemson shirt, little kid. I, I stopped him and I said, "He said, yeah, Clemson's my favorite football team. It was right in the heart of LSU. I'm, I'm like an hour from Baton Rouge. I'm going. I can't believe this. So you got the wrong Tigers, man. <laughs> down, down here, they're going to disown you down here, buddy. <laughs> disown you, but." Uh, uh, I thought that was thought that was from yeah big college I like college football but uh, NFL I don't follow as much I followed the Titans when I was in Nashville but they're just I think we got the first draft pick right it's about the best yeah. thing that happened this Close year it, anyway. yeah we'll be on up there up. huh <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. we got Mariota he was hurt all year and I don't know who knows.
Anyway, I don't I don't follow the NFL that close. 